In today's video, I am going to be breaking down John ja Morant and what makes him such an unstoppable, amazing basketball player in the NBA. There's a reason why he's an all-star this year, and that's what we're going to be breaking down today. If you're a player looking to improve your game, this is definitely a video for you. First off, his defense is absolutely amazing, and he really skies up to try and block those shots. Check that out, he even hits his head. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you are a player coming down on a fast break, or at least on a one-on-one -on -one situation, you have a main defender, you want to get somewhere between the net and your main defender who is guarding the man who is going up for the shot. Obviously, you probably can't jump this high. However, if you can get in position to block that player's shot, you can do quite well. A lot of players will make a mistake and try to go on the reverse side, and that while that could work, and if he brings that ball over towards this right side as Bradley did, you will be able to get that block. However, if he keeps that ball up over top of his body and you made any kind of contact at all with his body when he was shooting that would be a foul and on the fast break John Morant does an extremely amazing job at getting to the rim of course he can sky up like Vince Carter almost however there's a really good lesson to come from this and that is this is essentially a two-on-one situation the player on the ball side in my opinion should go down right towards the corner as we see here and then the player on the opposite side of the court John Morant in this case at the free throw line extended should cut in towards the basketball net that's exactly what we see here and that is why he is able to sky up for that shot or that dunk if this player was to cut down that would clog up the can the, the key in, in a sense and would maybe stop John Morant's ability to be able to get to that rim however the idea the idea behind going down towards the corner here for this player is so that there could be a kick out pass for a three if there was a lot of defenders who were able to at least contest what's happening there. However, there wasn't any defenders contesting it, so John Morant was able to dunk it. In this next clip, we see John Morant basically in a fast break type of situation trying to get in front of Kevin Durant. He's able to do that and he's able to sky up for a massive dunk, but there's a reason why he was able to do this. When he was on this fast break opportunity, he tried to get or at least held back slightly Kevin Durant. Now, I'm not saying that this was a foul because it's not. He just basically felt to see where he is and Kevin Durant was not going to have any of it. This was actually terrible defense. Kevin Durant should have tried to at least contest this from happening but there was a massive lane between the players and John Morant took that. He, of course, skied up for a massive dunk. What should have happened was Kevin Durant should have been really sprinting back to try to get in front and this player here should have actually tried to cut this off first however if no defenders were going to do that which none of them did you better go up for that dunk so here we have John Morant he's using a screen against the Toronto Raptors and now he gets what looks to be Boucher switching off to John Morant when this happens John Morant does his patented cross jab where essentially he crosses from his right side to his left and then jabs with his right foot towards this side so that he can establish the defender to have a top foot and when that happens he then attacks that top foot it takes a single dribble and there's really nothing that anybody is going to be able to do to stop that dunk from happening. We can really see it close up here when he does this crossover he then jabs with that foot which then drops that left foot of Boucher. Boucher is on his heel on the right side and that's the top foot so now he has a few different things that are going for against him at this point. Then John Morant takes that dribble and then he takes essentially that penultimate step. This is actually quite hard to do when you're coming from the right side planting that right foot and going up you really have to work on one leg power lunges lunge jumps things like that one legged squat jumps things like that to be able to have the power because believe me that does take a ton on. You're also going to need to do a lot of balance work as well to have all of the stabilizing muscles in your, and of course tendons and ligaments, in your legs, your knees, your ankles to be able to do this. And believe me, if you can work on those parts of your leg muscles, you're going to be able to dunk like this too. 
soon. By the way, Boucher, I'm sorry, you're, you're my guy, but you need to really work on your defense. Stay on your toes. Do not let your feet get close like this when you need to do a pivot. You need to keep your hips square with your, or at least your shoulders squared with your defender, and you just didn't do that. So here we have John Morant coming off of a screen, and like I always say, anytime a defender goes over top of the screen, you need to cut in quickly, and that's what John Morant does here. He's able to attack, and when he does attack, he takes that big penultimate step. Again, you really want to, when you take this step, get your foot and your body sideways and really use your hips, even your momentum sh muscles in your shoulder and your, and your lower back to get yourself up into the air and do not be afraid of who's in front of you. And I'm going to tell you that right now because if you can be fearless like John Moran here, yes, he misses the dunk. Yes, this could have been a ridiculous poster, but guess what? He still got that foul. Obviously, it made Dwight Howard say, what the heck? But being fearless, knowing that, hey, I am going to get this basket or I'm going to get that foul. I don't care what happens. One of the other is going to happen. You are going to be very successful. And we can really see it here. When he takes this penultimate step, he lands heel toe. And then when he brings that left foot around, he really brings it out away from his body. There is a reason for that. And that is he's going to be landing on his toes. He's going to be using that Achilles to get that springiness up into the air. He's going to be using his leg on this side to give him power to get up into the air this is for speed this is for power he's going to be using his lower back using his hips to be able to bring that ball up his shoulders are massive when it comes to momentum and that's going to allow him to get up into the air and by the way the way he bends here will give him even more power as well going up into that dunk and yes he does miss this dunk but if it wasn't for Dwight Howard there in the way he would have smashed it and the referees did call a foul on Dwight Howard the reason is because Dwight Howard was outside of that half circle or at least partially outside of that half circle we have to remember that when you are inside that half circle in the NBA or in FIBA whether you are fully or partially inside of it it's going to be called a foul on you you need to be 100% outside of that half circle here we see him using that screen again and then he gets that hedging man who came out way too far and his main defender got caught up on the screen. When he came off of that screen, this is a skill that every single player needs to be able to do and that is to gather that ball with one hand. Don't bring two hands together all the time to gather that ball. That is a giveaway to this defender to know exactly when to block your shot. If you can gather with one hand, guess what? At this point, he gathers on that foot. He could take two steps technically speaking to be able to go up for that layup remember we're allowed to take two steps he only takes one step which then screws up the timing of the defender by gathering it with one hand as well it messes up the timing of the defender as well which is the reason why he was able to make that layup the other reason why he was able to make that layup is because he was able to get his right shoulder in front of the left shoulder of that defender and that gives him the angle to the basket so that that defender has absolutely zero chance of scoring in this this is a fantastic angle right here when he's driving on Wiggins to see that angle right there where he's able to get that shoulder in front and remember being having your shoulders lower against your defender will give you more speed and balance as well all of those four factors together is the reason why he made that basket we can see it right here too that his shoulder was in front of his defender's shoulder and because of that again allows him to make that basket. This right here is something that every single player needs to be able to learn how to do. I hope that this video gives you the ability to become a better basketball player. If it does, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.